hello, party people. I'm going to give people a chance to come in. I should have gotten my other laptop so I could have played like some background music while people came in. But instead of that, if you are watching this on replay, let me know how your day is going. If you are watching this on replay, oh, you probably have been struggling. I know I can't sing. I'm sorry that you just had to hear that. Oh, that looks better, huh? How are you? How are you feeling? Hey, lovely. Really quick. Hello, my lovelies. Everybody in Guru 101, when you leave out of here tonight, I need you to head over to Sit Down TV because there is a new video for you over there if you have not watched it already. So what we are doing right now, I am um, burping in your face. Sorry. Um, right now, I am about to cleanse my scalp really quick. Y'all, I have a gray hair. And it just... <laughs> it just pops up. Oh, you look, you straight to the questions. You like straight to the questions. Okay, you said, what's the longest you can wear a wig before it becomes a problem? Well, I answer that question like this. Some, there's something called skin cell turnover, right? So skin cell turnover happens every 28 days where the skin cells on your scalp die off. And new skin cells form to basically help you with your natural hair growth cycle, right? So every, mind you, it's not just the 28th day that they begin to fall out, right? That those dead hair cells begin to fall out. It's every day throughout that 28 day cycle. So if you keep a weave in for three months, that means that you have three layers three months. So 29 times three. Okay. 29 days times three layers of dead skin cells that have not fallen off of the scalp. So now that you know that you can kind of answer that question for yourself. Like how long is too much? And I need y'all to understand something. Wigs. I know that we think wigs are new. Like, I know that we think lace fronts and stuff are new, but they're not new. Remember uh, the ones who had us in had black people in slavery and stuff? Those white spiral curl wigs, baby, those were lace wigs. Lace wigs are not new. What happened is love and hip hop, hey, lovely, love and hip hop and all of this stuff became popular. So, and then Instagram came along. So once Instagram came along, YouTubers and Instagrammers, influencers were online sharing the process. So you got to see the behind the scenes of weaves, but it's not new. Weaves have always been good to see you, even though I can't see you, I can just see your picture. So weaves were never meant to be something in your head for a long time. Understand that a wig was originally meant to be a costume piece. In movies, in movies, they'll go from like Demi Moore. When she shaved her head, she didn't really shave her head. That was makeup. So wigs and stuff like that, wigs and lace wigs is something that in the beauty industry we use to create an illusion. But these illusions are meant to be temporary. But because people spend so much money on it, don't get mad at me. We just being real because people go and spend $500 or $300 or however much money you spending on the weave. You like, okay, because I spent $200, this should last me three months. No, sis. A wig is meant to be temporary. You put it on and take it off. So a wig is never meant to be on your head for three months. A wig is something that's meant to be temporary. You put it's meant to be taken off at night. There are women who wear wigs 24 7. They got all their edges, they got hair to their butt, and it's because they use their wig the proper way. But now I'm not being disrespectful, but that shouldn't even be a question. 
How long can you keep something on your head? How long can you go without washing your butt? I'm just being real. The Your follicles on your scalp is no different from the pores on the rest of your body. So now that you know the, the science of hair, it's like you, you really got to put in perspective without asking me, just using common sense and logic. Like if the dead skin cells are falling off every 28 days, I should probably not go three months without washing my hair. What about cleansing your scalp with witch hazel while wearing a protective style? Witch hazel is alcohol. I am an herbalist. Witch hazel is in this book. It's great. Just take it out and wash your hair. I'm sorry. I'm not for it. Like, y'all can ask me whatever questions y'all want. I'm sorry. Don't get mad at me. I am not the shortcut girl. So if your question is, what can I do so I don't have to wash my hair? Or what can I do so I don't have to do this? I cannot give you an answer. Shortcuts get you short-lived length. That's why you see all of these people who y'all been following who at one point in time had hair to their butt and now they're cutting all their hair off because quick fixes get you short-term length, period. Because it's not it's not sustain, sustainable because you're not following the natural cycles of life. You are making stuff up. You're not following the natural patterns of your body. So I know which hazel is not meant to go on the scalp's follicle. It's not. It's, it's the same type of imbalance that you would cause as a woman if you're constantly dushing. You're messing up the natural pH balance of your vagina. You're messing up the natural pH balance of your hair shaft. So am I saying that, oh, it won't cleanse your scalp? Yeah, it'll cleanse it. But if you if you talking about long-term sustainable growth that you can that you can maintain, absolutely not. Because it doesn't follow the natural patterns of your body. But just washing your hair on a regular regimen will. If you have a style that prevents you from cleansing your scalp on a regular basis, it needs not be the style that you're doing, boo. I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. Yes. We use the non-comedogenic products on our face, but we don't care what we put in our hair. We should be careful for everything we put on our entire body. You better say that right there. I don't even need to say nothing else. Right there. You the real MVP, baby. Right there. Right there. People be like, oh, no, don't get no Vaseline on my face because it clogged my pores. But I grease my scalp with blue magic. It's like, sister. so you don't put Vaseline on your face because it clogged your pores, but you going to use Blue magic to grease your scalp. Don't you know that blue magic and Vaseline, blue magic and petroleum is the same thing? The only difference is it got blue dye 47 and a scent in it. That's the only difference. The only difference. The only difference, baby. The only one. But look, though, okay, baby, you thought you about to do a big chop tomorrow. Why? What does your hair look like? Don't, I, no, don't do no big chop tomorrow. Especially if you're in a guru one-on-one. I'll pop you in the mouth if you do a big chop. If you're in a guru one-on-one, -on -one, as soon as we get out of here, you got a video to go watch today. Anyway, a 45-minute video to go watch. Anyway, as soon as we get out of here. And then after that, I need you to send me a picture of your hair. Big chopping is not something that you need to do. Unless you're doing washing goals on a regular basis, which I don't recommend, what are you big chopping for? Just because your hair, just because your, your, your new growth and your ends are two different textures does not mean that your hair is damaged. I don't care what nobody say. YouTube tell y'all, oh, if your hair is, if you got curly roots or if you got a spot of heat damage, then cut all your hair off. No. Why? 
Because the only time that anybody could even tell that you have heat damage is if your hair is wet. If your hair is not wet and you properly set the hydrogen bond while your hair is still dry, you can nurse those bonds back together. You can't make the hair curl again, but you can make sure that you multiply the bonds enough for the hair shaft to stay tight and intact without breaking. There's a difference between your, your hair being damaged and your bonds being reconstructed. Don't big chop. I'm so sick. I'm not being funny. Do not big chop anything until after you send me a picture. Because there's no, no, don't big chop. Not yet. The only way that I'm going to be like, oh, girl, yeah, you run. big chop it. Girl, yeah, big chop it. If you got like six or seven little cabbage patch down patches, I ain't going to judge you. We all been there before. But if it look like that, then okay. But if you're big chopping because, oh, I have children. If you're big chopping because the curl pattern is different, no, we're not doing that. Mm -mm. In my experience, I big chop my hair often because I kept lightening it and I hated the straight ends. I also just like short hair on myself. Well, I mean, if that's what you want to do, then okay, but it's a waste of time. And y'all playing with y'all selves. Like most black women can have hair today, but already. But the second that you see a change in your texture, you like, my hair is damaged. I'm going to cut it all off and start over. Like, if you think about the amount of times that most black women big chop and really into account how long their hair would be if they didn't do it, oh baby. Most black women would have hair today, but I have a keratin, so I'm not about that natural. And you don't have to be. Like, I look at women who I get irritated when women like get on other women for not being natural because okay my hair don't naturally curl like it nor not me but i'm just saying somebody for example okay her hair don't naturally curl like it normally do but your titties don't sit up like they used to your titties do not sit where they sit with that bra on sister girl so you put a bra on every night so them titties is easier for you to manage in that shirt you ain't, don't nobody tell you you ain't natural. Don't nobody tell you you ain't natural. No, we let, we all let our us naturally put a bra on. I had two kids back to back. Hey, breastfed one. The girls don't sit where they used to be. I naturally put a bra on. Hello, push them up. Push her up. So if you putting on a push up bra every day, don't you tell no other woman that she ain't proud to be no black woman because... She got a, a, a relaxer when you got push up bra. Your titties don't sit up there no more, girl. They do not sit up there. Um, I have walnut oil. On YouTube. And I'm just using, and I do this every night. I do not go to sleep with edge control with my edges, period. My edges was on bleed earlier, though. Sure. Hey, Candy Girl. That's her name. Candy Girl. What you say? Come on to play. That's, those are not the words. I know that. So, but it just, <laughs> oh my God. Y'all. How do you feel about using onion juice in hair? Um, I think you should use onion peels because this is the thing. Once again, people on YouTube read one blog post and be like, whoa, use onions. And what y'all don't know is onion peels are more potent than the actual meat of the onion. Right now, somebody do it. Please, as many people, as, as many people as you can, as you can, as many of y'all want to, go in your pantry if you at home and go get an onion. It don't matter what kind of onion it is, go get an onion with skin on it with the most skin. Please hurry up, hurry up. And once you got it, once you got an onion, put a four in. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Please, please, please. Say four, I got the onion. Say four, I got the onion, girl. Say four, I got the onion, girl. 
Hurry up, y'all. Please, please, please hurry up. If you are watching this on replay, go get one. And then comment below. If you're watching this on replay, comment like, I got the onion. Girl, I got it when you got it. Okay, boom. Somebody got it. So, not enough. all I need is at least one person to confirm it with me. Okay, you got this. Look at the onion peel. You've never paid attention to it before. We throw away the most potent part of the onion, which is the onion peel. Now, look at that onion. First, first, I want you to cut one in half, okay? Cut the onion in half if you got an onion in front of you. Cut the onion in half, right? And then once you cut the onion in half, I also want you to take the skin of that onion off, right? I want you to just take the skin of the onion off. So I need you to have the skin of the onion in one hand and the, uh, the, the flesh of the onion in your hand. Okay, somebody say it done. Bet. Okay, so now that that's done, what I need you to do, Look at the skin of the onion and see how many veins you see. Look at the actual onion. The onion flesh is cool, but the amount of dark veins going through that peel. And give me a two when you see the veins. Give me a two if you see the veins. If you don't see no veins in the peel, don't say nothing. If you don't see what looks like darker veins in the peel, then don't just don't say nothing. But if you see the if you see what looks like veins, and even if you're watching it on replay. Even if you're watching it on replay, give me a two and say, yes, girl, I see the veins, girl. Okay, so the, the what you see, those veins hold so much potency. Natural sulfur, so you know how everybody want to do sulfur eight, sulfur, all of that. They taking that from or, the most organic sulfur on the earth, some of the most organic sulfur on this earth, which is the onion peel. And the onion peels is the part of the onion that we all throw away. So I'm going to save y'all some bread real quick. Save you some bread and this will help you ingest it. So you know how you go, you'll go and buy vegetable broth, right? Or you'll buy chicken broth. So instead of buying chicken broth and vegetable broth, what you can do anytime you peel an onion or a garlic, you just make sure you cleanse the peels, right? And then let them dry and then boil some water and put all of the peels in there. And then once the water boils, then put the peels, the onion peels in there and then put a cap on it and let it eat. Of course, you're going to be more so like down the organic or, um, the organic line, you know, because then you don't got to worry about them spraying pesticides, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. And so anyway, once you put that in there, let it sit for about 45 minutes. You have vegetable broth. I have not bought vegetable broth and I don't know how long because that's how, what I do. I never throw onion peels away. I let them dry out and then I make a broth out of them or I make a tea. So give me a four if that is something that would be interesting to you. Or if you've learned anything new, put it in your green tea drink. Yes. Yes. See, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Clean up. Oh, no, it's still so good. And what's crazy, like, too, when you cleansing your edges with oil instead of water, <laughs> you can literally feel the difference. Onions are definitely your favorite vegetable. Yes, I love it. So I'm not opposed to onion juice, but we grown. I'm being real. Who the hell want to walk around smelling like onion juice? Nobody want to walk around smelling like onion juice. That shit is not cute. I don't care. You going to have long hair, but like her hair long, but her hair smell like onion. Like whether you like men or women, nobody going to see you like, damn, she thick as hell, but... I mean, her hair long. It's worth it. I don't, I don't care if she really smells like onions. It's worth it. No, they're going to be like, her hair long, but I'm messing with her because she smells like onions. So is that good at regrowing your edges? It depends on why your edges fell out. Understand, everybody, if you have a bald spot, the only thing that's going to grow it back is fixing the problem that caused them to fall out in the first place. So, and don't get upset with me. I'm just being real. That's why with everybody, no matter what product you use, your edges will not grow back. Mind you, this is coming from a person who's been dealing with hydronide super sativa her whole life. So, I grow back spots on my head on a regular basis. HS, look it up, right? But it's like, if you are a person who isn't going to attack the initial cause, there's nothing I can tell you. I, I can tell you 
how to fix a problem if I don't know why it fell out. And this is what I mean. Let's say that your edges being gone are a result of a certain form of tension, right? It could be tension from headbands. It could be from ponytail holders. It could have been one specific time. It could be a certain edge control you use. It could be so many different things, right? But if I tell you, hey, go buy this, and then you go buy the product, but you still doing the thing that made your edges fall out in the first place, I'm, I'm, what, what are we, like, for what? So the only way that anybody can fix the issue is if you find out why your edges fell out in the first place. You got to figure out why your edges fell out in the first place, baby. Like, that's just like asking me, hey, what, uh, pass me the seasonings for what I'm about to cook. I don't know what to give you. You got to tell me what you cook. And then when you tell me, okay, well, I'm about to make an apple pie. Then I'm like, bet you making an apple pie. Yeah, I'm going to hand you nutmeg. I'm going to hand you cinnamon. I'm going to hand you some apples. And I'm going to hand you a certain type of apple because I know how to make apple pie. But if I don't even know what you're trying to do, if I don't know what situation you're in, there's, I can't help. I'm just being real. This is not just to you. This is for everybody. Because I get that comment a lot. Like, anytime somebody be like, oh, like, you don't never answer questions. It's like, I don't, I, we don't know each other. I don't, I can't answer questions like that. Yes, onion smell like musty AM pits. Before you cook them, they do. Yes. But the onion peels is good. I don't put, personally, I do not put onions, actual onions, in my hair. And mind you, it doesn't make sense. It makes it doesn't make sense for you to put it in your hair and not put it in your body because your hair, your scalp only it only takes in 60 percent of what you put on it. And then cut that 60 percent down if your follicle is blocked. So if your follicles are blocked or your skin cell turnover cycle ain't intact, then nothing is getting in your scalp. So it doesn't even matter. I like the way raw it smells, just not in my hair. That's the question. Seeing can just answer back when the dude book a one on one with her and talk. Oh, I didn't even see. I'm about to yell at my kids in a minute, y'all. I mentioned that before I put it in. Hey, you from Mississippi. Oh, you from Mississippi. Hey, sugar. Y'all cook so good. Sorry, you Okay, so let's go. Let's shoot with y'all questions. Let's go. I send it to my booze. And y'all have been a lot of y'all have been asking me to um show y'all how I cleanse my scalp and how I get the edge control off. So I'm like, it don't take that long. I can come on here and do it live really quick. So mm. Mm. What made you move to Mississippi from Michigan? Your nephew Flash, they Flash getting in trouble right now, actually. Okay, how to uh, how to fix moisture? You mean uh, moisture overload? I'm like, girl, what do you mean? So, okay, once again, 
Now, this goes into how, what level of moisture overload do you have? Because before I get started, I'm going to answer your question the best way I can without going too deep into it. Um, but your our hair is not like our skin. This is what I mean. If you if you cut your face, right? Seizures most likely is going to heal back up because your skin can heal itself. Well, your hair shaft is not that way. Hold on, it's reconnected. Okay, there we go. Your hair shaft is not that way. So, like I said, just in case it disconnected, the way that you cut your face and your skin rejuvenates itself and heals itself, your hair is not that way. So once you once your ends are dead, there's no putting something on it and fixing it and making it rejuvenate itself. No, you catch it before all the bonds are broken. Then, for example, if you don't deplete all of the bonds in your integrate, you don't have any bonds left. Okay, you've depleted all of the bonds in your hair. That's why it's like that. But if you still have a little bit of a structure, right, you have enough bonds for a bond reconstructor like Olaplex or other ones. That Olaplex is just my favorite one. But in this case, you'll have different bond multipliers that can multiply the bonds that you have left over. So then it can help it, but you have to have them left over. So once again, it depends on what level of moisture overload you have. If you have the type of moisture, and I'm about to be, I'm just keeping it real. Real deal, holy feel. Like if you have the type of moisture overload where you touch your hair and it feel like rubber bands or it feels like mush and it break and every time you comb it so go ahead cut it off because all that's gonna happen is it's gonna keep splitting till it gets to the follicle it's gonna split within the follicle and it's gonna slowly kill the cells within the hair follicle and then guess what you'll have a permanent ball spot that no matter what you do you will never be able to grow back because once the follicle is dead it's dead dead that's just how we go i'm sorry i really wish that there was an easier way that I could break down, but clay is meant to detox the body. Volcanic ash, if you Google volcanic ash, just think about what a volcano person who asks don't have none, it's just breaking down with common sense. So when a volcano erupts, right, it'll destroy up acting as a fertilizer. But when somebody thinks that something is like, oh, it's fertilizer, it's making stuff grow. No. With all of the organism doesn't want anymore. When a volcano comes in, it kills everything. It don't just burn some stuff a little bit, but then leave a little bit of the plants over there. Like, no, everything turned to a crisp. Volcanic ash is a purifier. When you go back in history and you research the civilizations that use volcanic ash, they use it as a purifier, as a cleanser. They used it as a cleanser. They would cover their bodies in it after it came back from hunting or anything that made them dirty. They would use it to clear up. We like to say, oh, if you can put it on your face, you can put it on your hair. No, sweetie, that ain't how it goes. It's, it's really not. If our hair grows one to five inches, 24 inches every year. I love you. But girl, listen, we are in my room, okay? We are in my room. I am not Bill not a science girl, okay? Look, I, you, this is Arbor Miss Black. Hey, look, not today. That's my mama to make rice. I'm sorry, y'all. Don't get mad at me, but I'm just saying. Hold on, y'all. How is your voice going? Phone going to voice me and the other. My mama is gone. Are split ends inevitable? No, they are not. If you maintain your ends, that's like asking, is your car breaking down inevitable? No. If you maintain your car, it will last forever. Well, not forever, but no. 
Can you ask mom to make rice? Because yeah. I'm calling the machine soon. Ty, you stupid. Yes. Yeah. I'm stupid. So I'm going to stay okay. They in there fighting over fucking stencils and all of this, that, and the other stuff, okay? So, <laughs> so Bell calls Deuce a girl because he mad because he want to knock her ass out, but he know that he a gentleman and he can't be doing that shit to little girls. So he in there mad. <laughs> He's like, ooh, don't, ooh, I can't stand. <laughs> Is that what was just happening? Cause yes. like I heard, I heard them yes. getting in trouble or something. Dude. So I was like trying to over talk it, like nigga, like Dude. I don't, you can't, hey, listen, you, can't get, you can't get them right while we on the listen. live in front of the people and Dude. shit. You so, know what I'm saying? Now they buddy buddy again. They didn't get little tears out and they. Cried. Oh, they was crying and stuff. Yeah, Deuce cried because he was he was like really really mad. She was like, "Why are you crying?" He's like, "I was like because he want to knock your little ass out. <laughs> he want to knock you out. That's the problem." <laughs> Lord, well, well, thanks for sharing, babe. All right, back to you, right? Yeah. Uh, Okay. What was our last question? Don't forget to ask mom to make rice. Sorry, y'all. I know that was good, Owen. I have a silly question. Can someone use Marcel Curl and Iron on their own hair? Or is it? Let me tell you something, girl. If you want to try and play with Marcel Irons or your own hair, then you go right ahead. We used to ride. We used to get on horses. I know somebody's going to have a problem saying this. I do not care. They used to take mail. Why do we get? We used to get our mail delivered on horseback. Now we take planes. We used to travel by horse and carriage. Now we have vehicles. Now everybody buying Teslas and shit, right? So when when Marcel Arnes came out, first of all, a black person did not make Marcel's. His name is Marcel. He's from France. When Marcel Arnes was first made, and everybody first was using it. That was way back in the day. Okay, using Marcel's. They had cell phones at all. I don't even think they had pagers when we was using Marcel Irons. Marcel Irons is uncontrolled heat. Once you put a Marcel iron inside, there is no way to know what temperature it is. No way to know whatsoever. So if you are a per but if 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 you can just get a regular flat iron, please. Have I ever heard of the Rivera blow dryer? Is that just the one that, like, just a regular round brush blow dryer attached me? It's a blow dryer. 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 But honestly, can I be honest? I would never spend, I would never spend more. Like, if I was doing it, when I was doing it here professionally, that's different. Because I do it for a living. I, I'm about to be so honest. Because I do it for a living. But now, doing it for myself at home, I would not spend more than like, I wouldn't spend more than like 60 bucks for a blow dryer. If even that. If even that. My last blow dryer that broke, I just went and got a hot tools blow dryer for $45. All you need is something to make your hair dry, bro. It's not that deep. It's really not. Just like, People buy Gucci belts, but the Gucci belt that you buy and the no name brand belt that you buy at Ross are made with the same fabric in the same damn factory. The, you pay it for Gucci. You pay for the fact that it's a Gucci. It's not better material because it's more expensive. It's just not. I'm sorry. It's just not. You pay for a brand. That's why, that's why one person could. I can sell bundles for one price and then Beyonce can sell bundles and charge $3,000 per bundle and there are going to be people who buy it because of the brand that is attached to it. Period. That's how it go. Okay. If we don't have any more questions, we don't go. Because I just want to give y'all that little tip real quick. Guru one-on-one -on -one members already got their stuff. I feel super accomplished because dinner is finished. 
Well, my mama kind of make rice. But other than that. How long do you, um, do I normally leave in my protective styles? I'm be honest. I never get past like three weeks ever. Um, these have been in, it feels like it's been two weeks, but it hasn't been a full two weeks, almost two weeks. But once my hair starts growing out, I'm not going to try to like nigger rig it and, and push it back in. Like, like this is baby hair stuff, right? Or whatever you want to call it. So this don't count. But once this starts growing out too much, I'm going to take it out. That's when damage happens. When you try to keep it in too long. And it's just me. I know people not going to want to hear this, especially if you pay money to get it done. But I know that every 28 days that I'm going to have new skin cells on my scalp. So I'm not keeping braids or weaves in my head for months at a time. I'm just not doing it. It's honestly really hard for me to have these in now, but it's hot outside. <laughs> I'm in Vegas, so. How often are you supposed to use clarifying shampoos? Once a month, if even that. You use a clarifying shampoo when you need one. You don't just use a clarifying shampoo just to use one. It's the same thing as like, when do you when do you wash your panties? You don't just go in your drawer randomly. Like once a month, I wash all my panties, even the clean ones. Like no, if if your whole drawer is all your panties is clean in that drawer, you're not just gonna go in there and wash them. Same thing. A clarifier is exactly what it needs. You'd only use a clarifier when your hair needs to be clarified. If your hair don't need to be clarified, don't just use a clarifying shampoo. I don't know. I don't I don't do the brand game with flat irons. I've been using one brand of flat irons for 15 years. Since I graduated cosmetology school, I haven't used anything but nano titanium baby bliss. I use EAP heat for a split millisecond, but then when not because it was anything where there's nothing wrong with EAP heat, but I've just nano titanium baby bliss. I've been using my entire career. So any other flat irons? I don't know. Because I don't, I don't, like, I'm not being disrespectful, but it's only consumers that be like, oh, I'm about to try this, or I'm about to try this, or I'm about to try this, or I'm about to try this. 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 Like, mm -mm. those are consumers. A professional hairstylist, we pick the, the tools of our trade, and that's it. How would y'all feel if every single time you went to your hairstylist, she had a different product on the shelf depending on what was popular out. You would be like, I am not, I don't know. She too wishy-washy. My hair always feel different. Hey, I've been doing hair for 14 years. I don't product hop. So I can't answer questions like that. How can I stop constant flaking? You need to figure out why your hair is constantly flaking. Then you'll be able to make a stop. Listen, I've used titanium my entire career. I actually don't like ceramic, certain types of ceramic irons, certain types of ceramic irons. Not because one works better than the other, but y'all, once again, that ceramic versus titanium stuff, that's make-believe on YouTube. Professional hairstylists do not have that conversation. I have never had that conversation with a professional hairstylist, ever. Ever. Never. I have never had a conversation with a professional here. So I was like, what's your favorite ceramic? Oh, I only use ceramic. I only use titanium. We the ceramic girls. Never. That is a social media thing. <laughs> a hot plate is a hot plate, baby. Like, what do you mean? Heat is heat. It's a tool. It's about the way you manipulate the tool. I was spending over 50 
Mine was $48.99 and you had it about six years and it still looks new. Yes, a blow dryer is a blow dryer. Do y'all understand? Think about this. If we rewind time, right, and we go back before the team natural community stuff took off, y'all was able to get blow dryers for $25, $30 and stuff like that. The natural hair products were not as expensive before the team natural stuff took off as they are now. Why is that? That's because they know they can see and they can smell and they have studied your desperation. And they know that women will pay whatever amount of money for things that they are desperate to have. And what are black women desperate to have? Long hair. So they sell y'all dreams based on the people that y'all follow and y'all buy it. And then there you go. And they make bread. They make bands until y'all hair start falling out and y'all start doing a process of elimination. And they be like, oh, it was y'all. But by the time y'all figure out it was them, they didn't got that bread already. They don't give a shit. Like Diva Curl, Diva Curl, do y'all think she cares that y'all suing her? She was on top of her game for at least 10 years. That woman did made millions of dollars. She's made so much money. She don't give a damn if y'all making videos about her. Y'all have already gave her y'all bread for years. Black women all over America then already paid her thousands of dollars to learn diva cuts. She's already made her guap. By the time y'all catch on to stuff, they got they bag getting on the plane, going sipping pina coladas. And getting caught in the rain while everybody's trying to figure out why they got protein overload from rice water. And everybody that's been selling y'all rice water products, they already got pina coladas caught in the rain, maybe while you chasing down the next product that you can use. But, you know. How high should the temperature be for somebody using titanium irons? The temperature is dependent on your level of porosity, not on the tool that you're using. So it depends on your level of porosity. That's another reason why everybody shouldn't do hair. I'm not being disrespectful, but it's not like, excuse me. People think that when we go, to, like when you go to cosmetology school or when you go to school, it's like, okay. You use this, you put it this high if their hair looks like this. You put the heat this high, their hair looks like this. No, we don't learn like that. We learn you put it this high if they have low porosity hair because the cuticle is tight, it's harder for the heat to get in. But once the heat gets in, then it sits there. So if the heat is too high, you can give them heat damage. But then somebody with high porosity hair, it could be at this temperature because their cuticle is open. So it'll barely hold heat anyway. As soon as you put the flat iron on it, the heat's going right out because their cuticle is wide open. And it can go up higher because their hair won't hold heat because the cuticle is open. Do you understand? It's using pro tools flat irons are tools to use when you put it with knowledge that you already have that's why i get irritated because it's not as simple as oh if your if her hair looks like this in this video everybody if your curls look like that put your flat irons at 400 no it don't go like that Hot, low porosity hair has to use low temperatures because the hair holds heat so if you have low porosity hair and you put your flat iron at 450 sister girl, you're going to have heat damage. Oh, baby, it's going to happen. Because once the heat go on there, it's going to stay right in there because you have low porosity hair, which means you have a cuticle that is tight and it holds everything, product, water, and heat. Mm -hmm. If you're a professional cosmetologist, you have some clients that you will put the flat iron on their hair and you can't even touch it right away that's because their hair holds heat they have low porosity hair but then you have some clients you can touch their hair when you're getting done it's because they have low porosity hair and their hair ain't holding no heat things are never as they appear y'all using a flat iron is not as simple as oh if her hair look like this you have it at this temperature no it don't go like that
Oh, what can you do to make your edges thicker? I was, I mean, if it's been like that, I'm just being real. Since if it's been like that your whole life since you was a baby, baby, that's how your hair is. Like everybody not meant to be a, a certain way. Like I now I love my dark eyes. Hello. But before I used to be like, oh my God, like what can I do? Like to make my eyes light? What can I do to make the melanin leaves? Nothing. That's what you got. So if 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 you, if your hair, if your, if your hairline has always been like that, like since forever, that means that that's the amount of follicles that you got active on your scalp. So that's what's wrong with it. If it's not bald, if it's nothing wrong with it, why are you trying to change it? Because I'm sure you mo most likely you the only person who noticed it. I bet you if you got a man or a woman, uh, they like, what are we talking about? Like, shut up. There's nothing wrong with that. Be quiet. So... If that's how you be feeling, if that's what they be telling you, I'm telling you that too. Shut up. Ain't no wrong with you be quiet. <laughs> Ooh, is there any way to keep your curls defined without getting close? Your follicles are in two different places. Your follicle is your skin. Your curls are down here. Your curls being defined has nothing to do with your follicles being clogged. Yeah, my edges have never been super thick. Yeah, babe. So, Miss Tate, you probably sex, you probably fine as hell. I hope you watch me on your TV and your man or your woman can hear me telling you to shut up. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You fine as hell with your thick ass. Or if you ain't thick with your slim ass. Sure. Shut up. Ain't no wrong with your edges, girl. We're not changing ourselves. We're loving ourselves. Shut your face. If it ain't no wrong with you, you shut your fine ass up. And go love yourself. Go look in the mirror and be like, damn, whose is this? <laughs> whose is this? And then answer yourself. Be like, it's yours. Whose is this? That's what you do. Hush. Nah. Well, what you miss? I don't know. Nothing really. <laughs> with your thick slash slim ass with your fan ass with your fan ass <laughs> this is a off the wall question is it anything called normal porosity hair yeah yeah my stylist said that that is what I have yes you have low porosity hair medium slash normal so medium porosity hair is normal porosity hair low normal to medium and then high yes and i'm jealous of you by the way if you have medium porosity hair that means you have a loose cuticle it's not hard for your hair to hold moisture i mean to absorb moisture it's not hard for you to let it go you have a loose cuticle i'm jealous of you Oh, you already answered that question. I don't even have to say that. Boom. Look at the comments because they be answering. They be knowing. After doing the challenge, my scalp be flaky. Okay. So the challenge is about you learning your body, learning your scalp. So if your scalp is flaky, you need to figure out what is causing your scalp to be flaky. Because first of all, if you did the challenge, that means that you detoxed your scalp and your hair follicle, which means that you got rid of layers and layers of stuff that was clogged. So if your scalp is flaky, you could possibly be losing layers and layers and layers of dead skin that were not able to fall off because your follicles were clogged. So I recommend using a scrub every week until it stops so you can get the dead skin off. I have a little porosity here and sometimes I wish, but look, don't, no porosity is better than the other one. It's just what you got. Some people got big butts. Some people got little butts. Some people got medium cheeks. You never know. It just depends on what, you, what you've been added. What's been added to the kids. Somebody got little peckers. Some people got big old bazookas. It just depends on what goes into it. But girl, shape, shape it up. Make it look good. Hey. Make sure it's understood. Hey. What crochet hair do you have? Any? Oh, thank you. Um, I'll leave a link to my Amazon channel over there because I did an Amazon live of this. 
If you guys are not doing so already, when you leave out of here, make sure you head over to my Amazon live channel and follow me over there for live um, product demonstrations. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Love what God gave you, sugar for hello. Are cornrows good for length retention? Um, as long as you are properly preparing your hair before you do it, that's for sure it is, boo. But remember, only time a protective style is protective is if your ends are properly protective. On the Guru One on One, I went deep into that. Actually, that was a because y'all got what like three videos this well not this week this week started so over the past what seven days Okay. Oh my goodness. It's 104 people in here and I only have 42 thumbs up. That is so messed up. And I was going to release a discount a discount code for you too. But I just don't even feel appreciated no more. Special product did you buy, babe? Did you do the body shop or the other one? <laughs> I could feel your intensity. Hold on, it's like that it's trying to connect some way. Okay, you said, How in the hell do you braid the ends of your, of your braid and have them stay laugh all out? Is that okay to use like a rubber band? Or, okay, so first off, I need to know how you prepare your hair before you braid it because. The way that you prepare your hair before you braid it has a lot to do with the way that your ends are maintained, right? So if you just let your hair air dry and then rain it, eh, maybe a little harder, eh, but I recommend using like a shea butter or a mango butter, or this is where a, a length retention batter can come into play. So if you just put in uh, like straight back in, then this is where you can make your of some shea bay butter or whatever or get some shea bay butter. I don't have any recommendations on my mom. But you can get some shea bay butter and after, once you get to the end, so let's say if this is your braid, once you get about right here, then you put the shea bay butter on the ends and then begin to braid down and that will naturally hold the ends together and it acts as a protectant. I don't recommend putting rubber bands on it because rubber bands are porous. So because they are porous as they expand and, you know, they will sometimes the it will like snag on your ends and snap them. So then you don't end up retaining length, the ends end up snapping. So and the thing is, hey, if you if something happens and you got to rebraise your ends every night, then so be it. That just may be something that you have to do. Remember. We have to stop looking, at, and I'm not saying that you are, but we have to stop looking for things that's going to make it so we don't, oh, I ain't got to touch it for a while. Give me something that's going to make it. I ain't got to touch it. Never. No. Because I don't believe that you should go months and months without touching your hair. So I'm never giving you anything that, and I mean, if other people want to do that, that's fine. They ain't got nothing to do with me, but that's just not my thing. I got a napkin, a wet one right here, just in case y'all was wondering, I'm licking my finger. I tried braiding two inches of hair. Stop doing that. Y'all see professionals do that because they're professionals and they know what they're doing. Stop. I don't braid. When my hair was short like that, I did not braid my hair. I'm not doing that. That's too much tension. Y'all y'all stressing the follicles out as y'all growing your hair and you're wondering why your hair not growing. Because the whole time it's been growing out, it's been like... <laughs> need to grow up the whole time you it's been holding on for dear life because you didn't grip the... it's barely there and you gripping it so that's something that i need everybody to think about don't put that much tension on your hair when you when your hair is growing and it first emerges out of the follicle that's when you need to be the most gentle on your hair all right 
Don't put all that attention on your hair when it's freshly like. Ah! God, fuck. Ah! Having shoulder lift, high density hair is such a struggle, but what I know is what I got, so I love it. Listen. It's cool. You just got you just get used to it. I want you to get used to it. And that's why I did the challenge because I want you to see your hair, feel your hair in its natural state before you're putting a bunch of products on it. Like what what that scalp do? What's your sebum level looking like? What do your hair feel like just with your natural oils? How much of other products do you really need? That's a question that everybody needs to ask themselves. And I feel like if everybody asks themselves that question, honestly, it'll be so much easier for everybody to be able to maximize growth. I redo my extension twist every three weeks. Yes. And I wash it with the twist and as well as the condition when I redo. Good job. But I don't want you to wash it with the twist in because, and don't get mad at me. I love you. I know who you are. I love you. You know I do. But I need to give you this visual. How clean would your panties get if you put them in a knot and then scrubbed them with like laundry detergent? If you put them in a knot, if you just tied it in a bunch of knots or put it in twist and then just rinse and then put laundry detergent on and then just went like that. When your hair is twisted up, you are not getting it clean. You are not. All of the shampoo, all of the debris, all of the assets lives in between the crevices. I'm not, I just need to give you a visual. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I just need to give you a visual, like see it in your mind. And that's how I am. That's why I talk like that because when people tell me stuff, like, if somebody's telling me something, I, like, picture it in my head. So, that's why I explain stuff like that. So, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying. I love your channel and the knowledge you give. Do you have any videos on ends that seem to always grow thin? I've trimmed my inconsistently sealed. So, listen. Your ends do not grow out thin. It's see-through. There is something that you've been doing over the years that is causing your ends to thin out your ends do not just get transparent that does not happen so there is either something that you've been eating wrong something in your diet that is making the melanin in your hair shaft dwindle down or there is something in your hair routine that is causing your ends to thin out your hair does not just randomly thin out no that does not happen Something in your routine is causing it. And the key to fixing it is finding out what that thing is and changing that routine and pattern. And then you can fix what it caused. It's 106 people in here and 66 thumbs up. That is so freaking rude. I'm not taking it off of here. Like, I, like for what? What am I even on here for? Yo, that's me. When I see people on YouTube washing and deep conditioning their corals, I'm like, like, I'm not being rude, but y'all, it's like washing your panties in knots. It's not getting clean. Like, I'm, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm so serious. Like, I'm so serious. Like, go put something that's dirty in knots and then go wash it and then take the knot out. Like, take a white shirt, cover it in ketchup, and then while it's covered in ketchup, tie it in a bunch of knots, and then go go wash it. And then once you wash it, put it in the washing machine. Don't take the knots out or nothing. And then undo the knots, and you're going to see that there's still ketchup under those knots. The, your hair is no different. New subby from the D, what up, though? Thank you for straightforward info and knowledge. I just thumbs up. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Oh, my God. Thank you, guys. There are more thumbs up, but it's not that many because there's 110 people in here now and only 76 thumbs up. That's so freaking rude, guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh.
how do you get your part straight? Um, can I be honest with you? I just parted and as straight as it look is how it be. I have never cared enough. Like you got to be bone straight and every piece of hair got to never in my life. Never in life. Never in the history of the world, Craig. Not just for the city, but the world. I'm not that girl. I care. I've always cared more about the science of hair than anything. I just, I get a red tail comb, but I just make sure the tip is always metal and I just take my time. I've never been one of those people that put edge control on it in the end because it's just not my thing. And if I do put edge control on, as soon as my braids are in, I cleanse my scalp with like walnut oil like I just did. Well, I did the beginner. <laughs> just <this. laughs> Sorry, because I know you, I saw your face and I heard your voice in my head when I read that. <clears throat> I don't know how people leave their styles in for six months. I could never with God. I do. And hey, y'all wanna know something? Can I be real? Give me a five. Can I can I tell y'all something that's on my heart and in my spirit before I go? So I'm about to go in a minute. But can, give me a six if I can say something. It's on my heart and on my spirit about me doing hair again. I'm not saying that I'm not going to do it again. I'm not saying that I'm never going to do it again, but I just want to be honest. <clears throat> Can I be honest? And will y'all promise y'all not going to judge me and nobody going to get mad be like, oh, see, ghetto, she a hood rat. That was so ghetto. Like, it don't have, it, okay. Just the way that we treat each other, right? Yes, boo, email me, babe. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it's like part of me really, really misses doing hair. It don't have nothing to do with YouTube, nothing to do with you. I swear to God, I swear to God. But I just love doing hair so much. Like, but it's like if the way that women like treat each other and the way that I see black women treat, I'm, I'm missing words. Y'all said y'all wasn't going to judge me. I just don't want to bring this person up because I don't want y'all to take this as like, oh, see, it was this one specific situation. This is a conversation me and my husband had earlier. So it's like, to go through my career, like 14 years of my career, and of course, towards the end, stuff was amazing. But to have women like nickel and diamond, like after you do their hair and they come in and having combed their hair in a whole month and they hair matted and tangled, but they only booked you for an hour, you don't charge them extra or whatever, or whatever it is. And then they get mad to charge that you charging them like, an extra $20 because you got to spend an extra hour and then you got to get on the phone and move all your clients back an hour and have all your clients mad at you. But then after you do all of this, they only will complain about giving you $65, right? But then I stepped out from, from behind the chair, not just because of that. Of course, that was one of the factors, but you know, many other things that I want to to take my life in a different direction, right? But it's like, but then I turn around and I see black women, the same group of women. Oh, thank you so much for subscribing, Evelyn. Thank you, girl. Welcome to the party. <laughs> so it's like to see the same women, the same black women who nickel and diamond or who who attacking black women for charging three for charging three hundred dollars weave, or the same group of women who are talking bad about celebrity hairstylists that's charging three thousand dollars for weave or a thousand dollars for weave are going and paying somebody twelve hundred dollars for a jerry curl, and then their responses like to see hundreds.
hundreds and the hundreds of women in a blog saying like, oh, if, hair, if black hairstylists was so ghetto and all of that. So it just make you like, okay, in, in, in what fashion do I want to move forward in my career when it comes to cosmetology? Like how much of myself do I want to continue to give out? And even though part of me was like, oh, I want to go back to doing hair. The other part of me is like, I mean, and not everybody I know, I'm not talking to y'all because I'm sure that all 100 of y'all deserve me. But I'm just just speaking in general, especially from where I live, like where I live specifically. It's like, how much of my essence do, should I really give out? Or like how much do other other people or women in this industry actually deserve my time? Or not just my time, but people in general. And it's just, I just, you know, it, it's, it's just so, it makes it so complicated to the point where I'm like, you know, I think I just want to go in a completely different direction. And I'm not the only stylist like this because now I have, remember y'all, I haven't been behind a chair in over two years. So now I'm a business coach and I have so many stylists like saying, how can, help me get from behind a chair like you. Like some of y'all favorite stylists. So it's like, it's it's a thing that is making it so stylists are so tired. This is in the double digits that people been dealing with it. So it's a, it puts me in this mind space. So like once everything in the world and Jumanji and stuff is over, like at first me and my husband was talking, I was like, oh, maybe I will go back and do it for fun. But I was like, I don't know though. Like, I want y'all honest opinion. As many of y'all can't, how do y'all feel about what I just said? Like, as many, like, be honest. And of course, I mean, don't type that, but because then I, you know, because we got to read it, but. Somebody other than black is crazy. I don't want to go to anyone who doesn't look like. Girl, listen. I don't understand completely. I make cheesecake. And the changes people try to put me through over it is crazy. Oh, that's what you said. You under and I know. Listen, boo, you make food. I feel like anybody who works in food is the same, if not worse, because if once again, people think that when they go to restaurants, that the chef fucking works for them. She don't work for you. They don't work for you. They're cooking for you. They're making something for you. I should do it. I should do what, boo? We've been lost. The relationship part is all business and money on both ends. Ah, come on. But that's what it is, though. For example, you'll go see a therapist, right? And you paying the therapist a couple hundred dollars an hour to talk, but you know that it's just business. You don't. You don't come talking shit to your therapist. You do not treat your therapist like you treat your hairstylist because you understand that is business. But for whatever reason, people take it personal. Like that one video I deleted, I wish I would not have deleted it. But the one video that I had where the girl was crying up there and wanted me to not go to my daughter's recital so I could do her hair. Because she had tickets to a Big Sean concert. I told you before, I stopped doing hair because they wanted to nickel and dime and complain about absolutely nothing. <laughs> Girl, I feel it's only real. I'm burned out in my job. You shouldn't have to jump through any hoops. I didn't last and I read. Girl, listen, I love y'all. I've heard this from many of my schools who are entrepreneurs. The changes people take them through is insane. You like y'all just do not know. Girl, I saw that video when you, oh you saw the, so you did see the video when you had it up when I had it up. 
I really wish I didn't take it down. But people were so, like, people were mad at me. I'm like, first of all, they're like, oh, my God, you're not meeting her. First of all, I'm five feet even. She was, like, six feet. So if anybody was scared, it was me. My little ass sitting there with this big-ass girl. <laughs> like, if anybody's scared, it's me. The hell? It's sad, and folks seem to really act crazy when the service provider is a person of color. Baby, listen. And please don't be a woman, too. Oh, baby. I cater, and some of my clients do not want to pay the deposit. I know you'll pay. Listen, like... But won't A1 optimum service, they won't shoot here on time. They won't, like, it's like, whoa. And that's why, and if you on here, babe, I'm sorry. I apologize if it was you, but somebody sent me a DM. And it's this new video somebody made. And they was, like, talking about, oh, like, this is why I don't go to hairstylists and shit like that. And to be honest, I get irritated when I hear people like, oh, hairstylist is ghetto. I'm sorry. First of all. Clients is ghetto. So, do y'all know how many times me and my husband have been laying in the bed and it's 2 o'clock in the morning and my phone is off because somebody calling me and I'm answering the phone because I'm not calling me at 2 o'clock in the morning. I know somebody did. Somebody's finger just got cut off. Somebody toes then fell off and started farting, I swear to God. And then I'll answer the phone and they had like, Hello? Hello? Like, they got an attitude that they can't hear me because I'm like, hello? 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 Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, How much you charge for what's all in? And I'm like, hello? Can you hear me? How much do you charge for a all in? And it happened that day. I was like, do you know what fucking time it is? And then she wrote a negative review about me on YouTube. I mean, on Yelp. It's like, oh, she's good old. She cussed me out. Like, okay. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. Professional Sam was asleep. I just need to find a good stylist. And like what y'all need to do is go on go online and start searching for cosmetologists. Y'all need to stop searching for the people who viral. Because I'm not saying that people who viral not good. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that just because somebody got a bunch of views does not mean that they know the science of hair. That could mean that they posted a video that popped off with views and then it went viral and a bunch of people started reposting it. It does not mean that they know how to grow hair because they got a bunch of views. So y'all need to start booking appointments with cosmetologists. Book a consultation. Get to know her. If she don't book consultation, she ain't for you, baby. Because every cosmetologist that I know that cares about hair growth, if you ask them for a consultation, they're going to be excited because a woman who asks to book a consultation because she needs to know more about hair growth and stuff is a woman who's going to follow my recommendations. She's a woman who trusts my professionalism before we even sit down because you got to pay for my consultation. They're not $100, but you have to pay for my consultations. And most of the time, my consultations is deducted from the price of the service if you do book, right? So when we're at the consultation, when you're at the consultation, you'll get to know the stylist. If y'all would have booked consultations, y'all would have knew that she was going to have you holding her baby. You would have knew that she was going to be eating hot Cheetos out of her apron and doing your hair. You would have known that. You would have known that she was going to be smoking a blunt while she was braiding your hair. You would have known that. But you didn't book a consultation. You booked based on how many views they got and how many likes they got and how many followers they got. And that doesn't equate to somebody being professional. Oh, my God, I'm so ready to take the braids off. We claim to hate the stereotypes against us. Yet perpetuate and say, man, listen to me. People love like one of the one thing that I really don't like. Oh, I ain't gonna say that because I feel like y'all gonna be mad at me for this. I'm gonna say that. No, I am. I'm grown. The hell, like cultural appropriation. That shit irritates me. Like when black women be like, uh -uh, like the whole thing with Beyonce and her people. Um. 
the the models in there had on afros and stuff and all black women was outraged this is my thing two things and then i'm gonna move on first thing how long have black women been asking for black women's beauty to be the standard of beauty too do y'all not understand that when something is a standard of beauty it's copied and then the second thing any woman that ha any black woman that has a problem with other women from other races acting as black women suck it up because i'm sorry we've been wearing brazilian peruvian and indian bundles for how long they just start making bundles of hair that look like ours like you won't see them picking in cultural appropriation when y'all wearing indian bundles and brazilian bundles like what are we doing we asked for black women's beauty to be a standard of beauty and then here we go like and then pick game um everybody else complaining about the different flavors that people choosing look if they don't like your favor go to somebody else's i don't get it there's so many different flavors around the americas i just don't understand hey the dominican hair salons do wash and roller sets for 50 dollars and they are so kind and professional. It's a reason why our cosmetologists are better than trichologists. Um, you can become a trichologist in a couple of weeks, and it takes you a year and some change to become a cosmetologist. When you um when you become a cosmetologist, most most trichologists were cosmetologists first, and then you go get like to be a trichologist is like an extra certification on top of your cosmetology license. But uh, I'm just being honest. When I studied trichology, I didn't learn anything different than I, okay, we're not going to. No, a trichologist is not better than a trichologist, than a cosmetologist, no. No, that's not true. Child colleges are more similar to dark. No, it's not true. It's not true. This is how it goes. And this is just in law. It goes hairstylist, cosmetologist, trichologist, dermatologist. That's how it goes. So a hairstylist is exactly what it sounds like. They style hair. A cosmetologist deals with the first couple layers of the skin from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. I can do everything. I could be your makeup artist, your massage therapist, your eyebrow tech, your skin tech, like anything from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. A trichologist studies the scalp and infections of the scalp. That's what trichology, like, trichology is. Trichology is exploring and learning in depth like a, a more in-depth, because you already learn it in-depth in cosmetology school, but in trichology, you go deeper into learning like different disorders of the follicle, different disorders of the scalp. So trichology is the, is the study of the scalp and it's different disorders and stuff like that. But a trichologist cannot do, a trichologist cannot do the same stuff that your cosmetologist does. So legally, your trichologist cannot use bleach and developer on your hair without a cosmetology license. When you become a trichologist, you do not automatically get to do everything a cosmetologist does. No, your trichology license does not make you automatically able to do everything a cosmetologist does. Absolutely not. A trichologist does not learn everything that a cosmetologist learns in cosmetology school. They do not. OK, they do not. It is not the same thing. You're not in school for the same amount of time. It, 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 it is not. There are two completely different things, it's completely different things. And no, like I said, a trichologist is not higher than a cosmetologist. Most trichologists were cosmetologists first. Then they went to go get a degree in trichology. That's that. Or no, I'm sorry, not a degree, a certification. It's a certification. It's not. It's not a four-year degree, a three-year degree. It's a certification. Okay? <laughs> oh, they didn't burn my scalp off with the damn dryer. Who? 
I just have my insurance by a new cosmetologist. I did do a consultation first. I'm thinking I want her to do some treatments on my hair next. We'll talk to her about it, boo. And she was already in your hair. She gonna know your hair way better than me. So ask her, baby. I don't step on other professionals toes. Like when you tell me you got a hairstylist, me still talking to you and giving you counsel, I feel like I'm talking to somebody and they tell me they got a man. I don't talk to nobody no way because hello, ring-a-ding-ding. But I'm just saying. Loud, loud, loud. I only get a wash it's under the dryer with rollers. That's it, ma'am, to the flat ironing part. Do your thing. I need you to know that you can get damage from a dryer too, though, just to let you know. Like it's not but okay. Because there's more types of damage. But, but do your thing, Noble. So I started taking care of my hair when I started therapy and learned to love myself, including my hair. I used to compare my hair to my cousins who had bald straight hair. No, please do not do that. And I'm not trying to say, like, if you somebody that got straight hair, like, oh, you ain't shit. I'm not trying to say that. That's what I'm saying. But it's like, sis, we, it's so crazy the way that our mentality is, like, but you thinking that you less than because your hair is curlier when in reality you got more. So her hair is only straighter than yours because she doesn't have as much protein as you in her hair. But your hair is super curly because you got a bunch of protein. Yes, But your hair is super curly because you got a whole bunch of protein. So it's like... Yeah, Dominican girl, I don't, I don't even want to talk that about Dominicans, so... You hope all is well. I missed you. All is wonderful. I hope everything's good with you and Hispanic families. The cousins who had curly hair were looked at as outcasts. Listen, at the end of the day, every every prejudice we have is literally just prejudice like that were transferred over from like our grandparents or not necessarily your grandparents, but the people that came before us, like hatred and racism and shit like that is taught. Like in my, on my mother's side of the family, cause my daddy's side of the family, everybody dick as hell, I ain't gonna hold you up dog. But on my mother's side of the family, like everybody's not necessarily that thick, I guess. And so they called me fast automatically like I was not sexually active or nothing but it didn't matter what I put on even like sweatpants it don't matter like if it, it looked tight oh you always had on little tight pants I had cousins that was like supposed to be like everything to me but she would say stuff like oh I'm just so glad that my body not shaped like that because at least this way I know that you know dudes love me or they want to talk to me because i'm pretty or they want to talk to me because of me not because of my body and she used to say that to me all the time so i was so self-conscious and i'm not gonna hold you up my husband is the one who got me out of that and i still do it like uh, if if my husband is not with me and i have on like leggings or something i always have like a shirt or something wrapped around my waist and they be looking crazy as fuck because, hey, girl, it be looking crazy as hell because I live in Vegas. So it'd be like 115 degrees outside. I got on shorts or leggings with some wrapped around my waist because I'm so used to like I'm so used to that. So when women like new thing that everybody got going around where it's like, oh, pretty privilege or or like, oh, women who think it's like it's shit is not all is cracked up to be because sometimes you just wanted to walk down the street. Sometimes you just want to walk down the street. Good damn, good damn. I remember. And this is stuff that I remember. Like it seems small to other people, but I still remember this shit at 31, like flipping across the gym and busting a split. And when I bust into a split, all the boys was like, man, she thick as hell. I know she fucking so. As soon as I walk in the room, I'm automatically the like sexual one because of the way that I'm shaped or because of the way that my body is. And it wasn't just people in the street. It was my auntie, my grandma, 
I'm like, oh, you fat. Ooh, why you got that on? And I would just have on a regular shirt and some regular sweatpants or a regular shirt and some regular leggings. So me and my cousin would have on the same exact outfit, but because of the way that I looked in it, because of the way my body felt out in it and the way somebody else's body felt out, like I'm fast. I'm the fast one. So that's why I just it's all about I just wish that we were all able to look at things from each other's perspective. Because yeah, some people have a heart or whatever, but having ass is not all it's cracked up to be. That's why when people begin stuff, I'll be like, you don't even deserve all that ass. You didn't go what I went through in childhood. I deserve all this ass. Over-sexualizing somebody's natural body features is as usual. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Anything that I put on. And like I said, I still, I'm still like that. Like, sometimes my husband be like, if you do not take that off, like, you with me, what are you doing? Like, take, what are you doing? And I'll be like, I just, I just don't. I just don't want to look like a harlot in the streets. I just don't want to look like a harlot. I just don't want to look like a slut puppet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so it was just crazy to me when everybody started buying ass. I'm like, oh, now we like cheeks. Oh, now we like ass. Oh, <laughs> oh. Ass is popular now. Whoa. Grandma. Hey, Grandma. Remember all that shit you was talking, Grandma? Grandma, they buying this ass now, Grandma. Hey. Remember? Hey. But look, I don't blame men because men didn't get a complex. Women did. The women in my family gave me a complex, not men. All men was like, God damn. God damn the things, mom looking hard. Damn, like God, you get in the Snickers dog. Like you think of God, damn, damn, come here. Hey, come here. Hey, come here real quick. Don't no, here. Hey, baby, come here. Man, what well, fuck you too then? You ain't even that cute. What your short ass? You a fucking midget? Like that's how stuff went in the day. Dudes didn't give me a complex. It's women. with lips i remember people getting bullied for look okay i didn't get bullied for my full lips but i'm just not growing into it because i used to hate that my bottom lip wasn't that my top lip was smaller now i don't even want to say that because then i'm gonna be staring at it but i used to hate how full my bottom lip was and how small my top lip was because my daddy listen my daddy lips so damn little my daddy lips so little that like this top lip is his lips, both his bottom lip put together. So, so I got my, but my mama got some full goofy ass. I'm talking about my mom. My, my mom's like, just regular. Her lips like, and so I always, so they would be like, oh, you got your daddy top lip and your mama lip. Like, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I got this ass from my mama though. My mama thick as hell, dog. My mama about to be, she about to be sexy. But she thick, girl. My mama fine as hell. My mama thick as hell, dog. Oh God, my mama thick as hell. I know that sounds crazy to say, but nigga, I live just like my mama. So I know when I approach this, I'ma still be thick. Now the motherfucker I'ma still be fine as hell, dog. Oh my mama, dog. I'ma still be fine as hell, dog. Not to mention you five ten. See, listen. That's some bullshit. First of all, I don't got nothing to do with this. I was down. I wasn't up. Well, maybe I was. But I don't remember being like, my, oh, Lord, oh, God, that money. No, out of all them aunties, oh, she cool. She got pretty eyes, but right there. Her, she thick as hell. I want her to be my mama. Bet. Oh, and look at my dad. Oh, hmm. But look at my grandma, though. Look at my daddy mama, though. Oh, she thick as hell. I want them. I, no, I don't have nothing to do with that. I was minding my business and out of nowhere. And I just woke up with ass. I was like, what in the world? Give me a four. It feels a little weird. Oh, and you go to put on your pants and you find yourself starting off putting your pants on right here. And you in, in the goddamn bathroom, hopping over there to put them on. 
it just happens out of nowhere. You just wake up with ass and then everybody like, oh my God, where you get that ass from? And you like, I don't know. I was about to ask you. I was about to ask you where I came from. I don't know. But nah, everybody, er, girl, everybody in the club being tips and I. Everybody buying them cheats to compete now. And don't get me wrong, I don't see anything wrong with it, sis. Do what you got to do. Because let me tell you something. If I didn't have it, I would have went to get it. What are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? So I'm not knocking it. I'm just talking about my experience on the complex that I grew up with. Like, people love ass now, but I grew up with the complex because of it. Because when I was young, give me a four if you've ever heard this. When I was younger, like, they all of my family was well not all of my family but the dusty side was like oh she for sure having sex because her hips are spreading because i start getting thicker so they like oh if you start getting thick out of nowhere it means you having sex so it was just this big old thing because my body looked a certain way automatically you like nope she like this nope she like that nope she like this and that was my fucking life so i'm i'm naturally i'm a cancer anyway so I'm, um, and I'm a natural introvert. So I was just like, forget it. And I just stayed in the house. <laughs> what up though? What up? All my life I had to fight. I had to fight with this Dunkin' Donuts. You had to fight with all that ass. All this, all your life. Listen, it ain't my fault. What you mad at me for? This is my mama's fault. You got a problem with all this ass. You got to talk to my mama. Because, oh, God, if, if let me tell you something. I wish one of them would say some shit to me. Now I'm 31. I'll tell any of my aunties, you got a problem. You go say something to my mom. It ain't my fault I got all this ass on me. What you want me to do? The assumptions, huh? They always thought I was fast. Wait. They always, yes. Oh, my God. Wait. Oh, wait. No, I had to go. Oh, my God. I'm about to, wait. Where did it go? Wait, where did it go? Oh, man. Oh, here it is. Tanya, you said they always thought I was fast and having sex. Meanwhile, your daughter. Let, let me tell you something. Now I don't give a shit. Who watching in my family to feel some type of way? I don't give a shit. Listen, like. Everybody that was like, oh my God, she fast. Oh my God, seeing is fast. Like when I tell you my family started the biggest rumors that like I'm still ending now today at 31. I got me, I met my, my husband when I was 19. We got married when I was 20. For my 21st birthday, I couldn't drink nothing because I was pregnant. So I'm trying to figure out where these thought diary years happen when I've been married. I've been with the same man. I'm 31 right now. And I've been with the same man since I was 19. No, I was not a virgin when I got married. But I didn't have, I, nigga, like, Sherman was my thought. Like, what? Like, just, what? But that's what it was. My whole family, oh, she having sex. Oh, she fast. Oh, she, listen. Being called a hoe, non non fucking stop. Oh, and don't let don't have a favorite cousin that is a thought. Oh shit, you think and you hang out with her? Oh, that's it for you. <laughs> Tori, you said, "Damn, I hate to hear that. I can't relate. I'm tall and slim as fuck, girl. Listen." I used to be so jealous of some people. Like, I just wish I didn't have to deal with this shit. Like, it seemed like it's flattering. That's why, like, with some girl girls that like that attention, I do not understand. I've always, God damn, damn. And maybe that's because where I'm from. Because a dude, dudes from the, D, from the D are not like, damn, baby girl, what up? Well, some of them are. That's not true. That's not true. But, uh, uh, like Fairlane, if you from the D and you was around, uh, like damn, hey, 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 come here, come here real quick, hey, come here, come here. And my husband let me know something not too long ago 
the May stuff makes sense to me because I didn't understand. They would just cuss me the fuck out most of the time because I just wouldn't say nothing. I'm like, if you avoid eye contact, this is what my, my mentor is like. If I avoid eye contact, then we don't got to talk at all. So I just went to the back. Oh, fuck you too, then, bitch. So me and my husband were talking and I said, well, how did stuff normally go? How, how would stuff normally go? So it would be the other girls, they would be like, hey, what up, bitch? Hey, 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 what up, mama? Come here. And then they'll come over there. And Ty said that women would be like, oh, I bet you, you, you ain't talking about nothing. I bet you, you don't want to go in this bathroom, no. Meaning, I bet you, you don't want to go have relations in the bathroom. And they would just do it right there at the mall. It was girls when I was in high school at Redford. If you from the D and you if you from the D and you hear me say the word Redford, you know what I'm about to say. They would go up to the abandoned floor at the top of Redford, and it would be two girls. I almost said your name, girl. And it would be two girls, and all of the dudes, anybody that wanted to, would just go up there, and they would just be talk about it. Just must those bitch, you and all your friends like that's so. Yeah. That was Detroit. And I was in the house. I was in the house. I remember this. Keep getting caught. Uh, no, it's still a virtual wow. I don't know. Honestly, I I feel like a lot of older women back then that would do that, they was just thinking about their old thought days and was like, that's what happened. That's how I used to be looking like, no, auntie, I'm not a thought like you, auntie. I'm just thick, auntie. I'll just be eating and stuff. You sound so much like my daughter. She too, like it is. Well, listen, Miss Coach, you've raised a great child because this is the thing. So I want to say this on behalf of your daughter, and I hope you go get her and take a time step for this right here. This is the thing. Like, this is how I am. My daddy raised me. He told me, and I remember, and this is, ooh, that was gross. Ooh. He told me, like, if I'm ever anywhere and I feel uncomfortable, that I do not have to stay there, and I do not have to let people talk to me any type of way, and that I teach people how to treat me. So blame Sherman Edwards for the reason that I mean is the way that I mean is. My girl Shelly had the biggest natural ass I've ever seen. She hated it. Huh. They paying big bucks for ass today. We could have made money if we listen. Look, god damn it. Like if if god damn it, if it's like if I'm young gonna be calling me fast every five minutes, I wish them YouTube was up then. Cause at least I could have took some pictures. Shit. I'm talking anything. Like it. Like when I cheer, everybody got the same uniform, the same uniform, the same color, the same fabric, but it go on. And I'm not being disrespectful if you small, but a girl that's a size two put on a uniform and I put on the uniform, girl, ain't nobody think about her ass. No, nah, I don't mean it like that, girl. Don't get mad at me if you a size two. Girl, everybody think about them little, them little Tic Tacs back there. Girl, everybody think about them little Tic Tac flat back there. Everybody think about that, girl. Your little... Little York peppermint patties, girl. If I think about them things back there, but then if I put it on, it's like, oh my goodness, like, oh, maybe you need a different uniform because that too. What do you want it to do? What, how do you want it to lay? What do you want me to do, guys? Like, what do you want me to do? You want me to suck my ass in the whole time? You want to buck around like this? <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? Tic tacs, little tic tacs, little flat, flat tic tacs. I'm just saying. That's right. Power to the ass. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. So let's stop that in America right now. For in the 2021, okay? From the 99s to the 2000s, god damn it. From now on. Everybody that's thick, y'all stop talking that shit, okay? Don't be attacking 
your nieces and nephews, yo, not your nephews, but maybe your nephews, your sure, own nephews may have asked you, you know what I'm saying? But like, don't be attacking your grandkids and your sisters and, and, and stuff like that because they got asked you. It ain't they fault they got a slice of the cake and you got to wait. That ain't they fault. Okay? Yep, don't, oh God, don't wear a skirt. Mind you, it wouldn't be short. My cheeks wouldn't be out. Oh God, my daddy ain't play that shit. My cheeks wouldn't be out. Everything would be covered. Like, it'll be just as much thigh showing, or my thigh showing as theirs, but they thighs look like this, and my thighs look like this. So it's like, um, that is so inappropriate. So it just makes you feel shame for your body like i've always felt like i've had to cover up my body because it makes people uncomfortable to be honest i still don't wear shorts it just happened like a couple days ago me and my husband were about to go somewhere and i had my booty shorts on and he was like babe like just come on you with me i'm like um no i am not having all of this ass out like no absolutely not it gives me anxiety i'm not even being funny I was the same when I was little. I wasn't allowed to wear biker shorts like my friends because of my biker shorts. I wear short. I was banned so much from wearing shorts that I barely wear them now, and I'm a grown ass woman. My ass made so many people uncomfortable. But now get used to it. I don't give a shit. Y'all been making me cover my ass up all this time. Now y'all spend all this goddamn money on ass, huh? Huh? What type of shit is that? Huh? You want to make real African ass fill away? But you going to get melted ass and I will pop in the face. This is ridiculous. But on God, that's why so many black girls grow up. Feeling, and I, I don't care how many people don't want to talk about it. Out of everybody in here, I know I am not the only one who felt like that. I know I'm not. Um, no, that I'm not. But I grew up with a conscience the whole time. Even once we, that's like, oh, no, she fast. Even when I got married, like, my sisters didn't come to my wedding saying, like, oh, well, I think that she's pregnant. Like, she's pregnant. Like, I was fast the whole time. It was shit, okay? She's pregnant. She's pregnant. No, she's pregnant. That's the only reason she get married. Then Bill came out a year later. It was like, well, that was a long-ass pregnancy. So, you know, and, and now nobody's talking and shit no more because they can't. I'm 31 and I've been married to my husband since I was 20. So, yeah, that's kind of hard. We can't, that narrative kind of has to and die, you know. My daughter has always had a buzz who I verbally disagree her relatives. Over. Let me tell you something. My daughter, listen. I look like I look. And my mother-in-law, god damn it, she was stacked like a Russian racehorse at the Kentucky Derby. Do you hear me, god damn it? My daughter is all, I already know. I can see my daughter. She's about to be 10. You, you, there are no words to explain how much I will cut anybody in my family out for saying one syllable of a word like they said to me to my daughter. Like, like, I, I tell you so, but like, I'm, and I'm ready. Oh, God, I can't wait. God, oh, Lord. Because my daughter is, I feel like my daughter body going to be more savage than mine on oh God. Oh, I can't. Oh, I wish. It, oh, I wish. It would. My mom tried that with my eight-year-old niece and five-year-old daughter. I shut it down. It's not there for that big behinds. You will not guilt them or make them feel ashamed. Yes. And I'm sorry. That, that And I didn't want to go there. You said it. Like, it comes from mothers and grandmothers it was my grandmother that made me feel like it was the wrong with my body or that i was oh, like oh what's wrong with you or like anything any flaw that i had i remember my grandmother every time my grandma saw me she would she would like talk about my acne because when i was younger i used to have like pretty you know you go through a little you know little things and every time she saw me, she would be like, oh, my God, your face is so. And it was so crazy because my father died, right? My father passed away seven years ago. And my dad died the day before my father's funeral. She sat in my face telling me how my skin, how bad my skin looks and how 
I, like how broken out my face was and how I just need to put some Nivea on it and all of this stuff. And I'm like, Grandma, I know, like, I just, I, my face is just sensitive. And my dad's kind of dead, so that would kind of, and she's like, you just don't never live, you know what I mean? Like that type of shit, you know? That's the type of family that I, you know? The same thing that your daddy told you, we told our daughter and she'll be 31 in September. Oh, her birthday coming up. I just turned 31. Tell your boo I say happy birthday. Yes. Well, thank you so much for telling that to her because I'm going to tell you something. Guaranteed that was life changer for her. Because you saying that you 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 told your daughter that same thing. Like my parents told me that. It literally helped me not go deep into like looking at myself like it was something wrong with me like they really helped me with that so that was that's everything no nope, i still get it now it worked too an hourglass and buying blue jeans is a nightmare it's like what the fuck it's crazy though because isn't it funny give me a two if you agree isn't it funny and we're gonna go it's almost seven o'clock here isn't it funny that women who are actually born with ass get made to feel like they are over sexualized or like it's they're too sexual but then women who go get plastic ass is like oh my god that is good oh my god that is so sexy that's not overly sexualized that's not it's it's fucking crazy it is crazy <laughs> it's so crazy so mentally growing it was confusing like when i just saw people switch my aunt said something to me once that after I went upside her head, wait, uh, it never happened again. Girl, I know that's right. Because oh God, one of my aunties, I'm ready on sight, swear to God. And now people are, baby, it's a shame now the older generation has no idea how powerful and how harmful their words could be to their children and responsible for shaping them. Listen, that's all I'm going to say. And then I don't even got to talk about this no more because this is a whole other conversation that I don't want to offend nobody on. But it's like when everybody is like, oh, dudes ain't nothing. And dude, I'm like, I'm sorry. Who the fuck was they daddies and their grandfathers? I'm sorry. I just my I just met, found out about another, another auntie that I had. I don't even know how many children my grandfather or my grandmother. So I'm trying to figure out like where, why are we acting like dudes that treat women any type of way are coming from nowhere because most of our grandfathers and our fathers like had multiple children on our mothers and then when they got done cheating on our mothers they became pastors or deacons and they throw it all in the lake of forgetfulness and god forgives them so they never talk about it and they get to judge you so i'm and i ain't, I ain't being stink i'm just saying like, I just, mm, let's change the subject. So we're about to get off of here because I'm about to go eat, even though I already cook. Yeah, that tiny waist, big old booty is a nightmare. Listen, like, everybody, ooh, I want a slim waist. Slim waist at it. Listen, don't get me wrong, it's great. I know somebody that like it, okay? I'm not complaining about it. I absolutely love myself, but... It, it took me getting over the stuff that I went through when I was younger to make me feel like there was something wrong with my body. Like, I used to feel like me just putting on clothes was just, like, wrong. Like, oh, my, and there was nothing I can do. It don't matter how big, like, for, like, even today, if I put on my husband's sweatpants, my ass is still big in them. There's nothing I can do about it. Like, That's how my breast came. That's how your breast came in. You just woke up like. That's how it was for me too. It was my my ass and my titties came on the same day. Obviously not full 100%, but like. Because you know how you had your little apple seeds first. You had apple seeds for a while. But they went apple seeds to full Granny Smith like overnight. I just woke up like. And I really did this. Like, I was, it was a mirror right there. And I was like, do anybody else see these titties? <laughs> oh, I got titties. <laughs> oh, I got titties. Oh, I got titties. <laughs> I was touching them 
like that with somebody else and it's like, oh, got some titty. Did y'all do that? Give me a five if you did that. Did you do like, oh, and then when you first get them bad boys, they sitting up proper to the motherfucker. So you know how like my mom and my daddy used to go like this, like, but we would still like go like that. Like if you saw somebody naked. So I saw what the titties look like in the movies. I was like, oh, my titties. See, just like that, and motherfucker, just like, hello. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good morning, ma'am. What kind of shit would you like for us to grab for your day? Shit. <laughs> mm. And then you go outside, they're like, oh my God, you need to cover that up. You're like, you want me to cover up the dick? Da -da -da? Look, auntie, da -da -da -da. they're like, you fast. But now that I know at 31, auntie, what you was really saying is, my titty still don't look like that. And if you wouldn't have been hating, auntie, they probably would have got plumper. But you was hating. So now they're the same size that they was when you was talking shit to me when I was little, auntie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all had to hear that. We about to go. I just wanted to, I just needed to get that out. So let me just say this to all of my thick girls around America, okay? Listen, if you got to hop around your goddamn room just to put your pants on, and then once you get them past your butt, you got extra space around your waist. God damn it, I just want to tell you that I love you, and you is sexy, and you don't got to apologize to nobody for nothing. And if your auntie got a problem with how big your butt look, tell your auntie to go do some squats, because it ain't your fault, okay? Give me a two if that makes you feel good. And then, girl, listen, if you ain't got that much ass on the menu, don't feel no type of way. Girl, you ain't missing nothing. You see what we've been going through since we was little? You ain't have to go through that shit, girl. You did not. So I love you, okay? And, okay, I was about to lie to you and tell you that you could squat to get ass, but that's really just me. I love you guys. <laughs> this was fun. Okay, so if you are on the Guru one-on-one, -on -one, head on, head on, head on to my website to check out the new 45-minute video that you have. And then if you want more information about what the Guru one-on-one -on -one is, when we get out of here, go look at the last video that I posted today. It's only like a minute and 18 seconds long. But go watch that video and that video breaks everything down. I love you, boo. And it breaks everything down on exactly what you get inside of there, how to deal with everything, how to sign in, all of that stuff, okay? So, <clears throat> so I love you guys so much. If you don't see me here, you will always see me over on my website. And yeah, yes, new video. If you are on the Guru 101, head straight over to my website and go on Send Out TV. And when you click on Send Out TV, there is a new 45 minute video there. So I don't know if you gonna watch the rest of it because you already been sitting here with me for almost two hours. So you got another 45 minutes with me if you want to, but I love you guys so much. Oh, wait, oh shit, wait a minute, wait. Oh, the kind of mama, wait, oh shit. Wait a minute, so wait, all right, wait a minute. Shit, Auntie Trina. <laughs> Auntie Trina, look, I'm sweating. I'm hot. Auntie, okay, look, wait, don't go. Please don't go. Okay, so listen. <coughs> wait, <laughs> everybody. So, one of my childhood best friends is the Kayla, right? Kayla, I love the Kayla so much. Anyway, so, hey, Auntie Trina. So my auntie Trina is a hood nigga. You hear me? Like, I will never forget. Look, I knew that T Trina would kick the Kayla ass for sure. Cause this one time I told this story before and I already told the Kayla that I would tell it so she don't care. Auntie. So we was at school this one day and auntie Trina did not play that. She was like, whenever you leave this house with the Kayla, you better come back to this house because if you don't, I'm kicking your ass. So <laughs> This big ass girl, what was her name? Auntie Trina, was it Sabrina? Whatever her name was. She had stole the cable phone. 
And at this point, I had only seen Zakayla smile. I had never seen Zakayla mad. I had never seen Zakayla want to fight nobody or nothing. So we sitting there. She like walking around on mad. I'm like, hey, what's wrong? She was like, I'm about to beat her ass. I was like, I said, you're going to beat her ass. She was like, I'm not getting a whooping when I go home. She got my phone. We was in the lunchroom. All I remember, all I remember is she was like, there she go right there. And I remember Zakayla hopping across the table and whooping that girl ass. It was like, give me my phone. I'm not going to get a whooping. And then took her phone and walked right back to class. I was like, I'm scared of Auntie Trina. Like, because... The way that you just transformed and was almost willing to kill her, it was like the matrix. Auntie, because Taylor and then Zakayla double joined it. Is that how you say Auntie? Like she could put her hands, like she went on people that could do, like she would just randomly, like we just sitting her talking, she just randomly like put her leg around. You were like, Zakayla, what are you doing? And when I tell you, Kayla, like, <laughs> I think her name was Sabrina. She was so big, she went and swung on Zakayla. Zakayla was like, <laughs> I see Trina, remember I demonstrated? Zakayla was like, mm -hmm. bing, bing, bing. I was like, oh my God. I'm so scared. I didn't say nothing to Zakayla the rest of the day. Like, when we got to the house, I was quiet. Like, I didn't want to talk no more. So, I'm sorry. Auntie Trina, I love Auntie Trina. Auntie Trina. Auntie Trina was the auntie that I knew that like if I was outside and some shit went down, I could be like, Auntie Trina, something happened and she would whoop their ass. Auntie Trina is the one that would whoop your ass. But she was she was cool, cute though. Auntie Trina always had her hair done. Always. Auntie Trina, I never saw your hair not done. Never. Never. Hair always popping and crimps. Always cute. Always. Like, yes. Is there anything? Yes. Like, Auntie Trina, the real MVP. Real Detroit nigga, stand up, Auntie Trina. <laughs> okay, Auntie Trina, I swear to you, I am going to come see you when I get back. Blame Zakayla this next time. So I'm blaming Zakayla because, first of all, she not here to defend herself. You know what I'm saying? So I'm blaming her because what's she going to do? She's not here. So I'm blaming Zakayla because the last time I was in town, no, the first time I saw Zakayla, Zakayla went like, oh, Auntie Trina, Cynthia here. So she didn't even tell you, Auntie. So Zakayla fought the first time. Did she tell you we was at Big Boys and you ain't even come? Okay. And then after that, what ended up happening was I don't have a story. So I'm sorry. When I come back, I'm, I'm going to call you. And Zakayla was out of town the last time being fast. So that's what happened the last time I was in town. It was Zakayla's fault. So, okay. Okay. So. I love you guys so much. Um, Melanated Princess, I hope you shit on yourself tonight while you're sleeping. I hope that. <laughs> while you talk about, hey, nigga, and being disrespectful, I hope that your sleep is so good. And I hope you, like, sneeze while you sleep and just shit all over yourself tonight. I really hope so, okay? And I promise, Auntie, I love you so, so much. I promise I'm going to come see you. I'm about to text Zakayla as soon as I get off of here and be like, your mama still like me more than she like you. Because I used to tell her that all the time. I know it's not true, but I'm going to say it again. So I just want to tell you. I love you. And Melanated Princess, remember, shit on yourself tonight. <laughs> Please. Shit on yourself. <clears throat> like, <clears throat> <clears throat> squeeze it out. Mmm. -hmm.